So it finally happened. The SDK, the long awaited SDK that will offer support for third party apps from DJI has been released. This happened actually a few days ago, but without any software uh, supporting it, there's not much use for, for you having access to this new feature. If you don't already know what the SDK is, that is basically a set of commands that is being uh, exposed from DJI that will allow third party software manufacturers like Litchi and DroneLink and Drone Harmony and all the other third party softwares that we have been seeing supporting some of the other drones from DJI Mavic Mini, the Air, the Mavic Air and the Air 2, but not yet have been supporting the Mini 2, the Air 2S and the DJI Mini SE. This is what has become available now. And in this video, I will give you proof that it actually works. While we are waiting for bigger companies like Litchi and DroneLink to offer support uh, through the SDK, but a smaller company called Protlot that has an app that's called Rainbow for DJI drones has beat them to the punch as they have released an update that offers support for the SDK. Let me show you that it actually works on Android. The SDK is not yet available for iOS. So I start by going to the Google Play Store and then I search for Rainbow DJI and then I get access to the app and it's possible to download a free version that will allow you to try this out for yourself. While it's downloading, let's jump under the version history. And here you can see version 432 that supports the DJI Mini 2, Mini SE and Air 2S drone. Support to show flight disabled area fix crash box on Android 12 devices and fix some problems. But it's definitely the most interesting part of this is the support for Mini 2. After I installed the app, I just briefly jumped into the DJI Fly app to make sure that everything was updated on my Mini 2. And luckily there was an update from DJI, which was for the remote control, which I guess is needed to enable uh, the SDK. To be on the safe side, you definitely need to install that. It's a very small update. It's only 0.65 megabytes, so that's very, very easily done. So before testing out the SDK, I decided just to use the Fly app just to make sure that everything was working. It's pretty dark outside right now, so it's quite limited what I could actually do. But I just took it for a short hover to make sure that everything was okay. After making sure everything was working perfectly fine, I launched the Rainbow app to see if I could make it work. After giving the app some permissions, we were basically ready to go. At least that's what I thought. So the first thing that you need to do is of course to select the right drone from the drop down menu in the top of the app. Once that was selected, I had a few problems actually getting it to connect and to show what was going on. So I had to restart the drone and I had to restart the remote and the app a few times. So after I've tried to fiddle a little bit around with everything, uh, making sure that I was selecting uh, the right permissions for the app that I was using, and in this case, the Rainbow app, I managed to make it work. There's no doubt this is early days, and of course there are some glitches and stuff that needs to be ironed out before this will work smoothly. But at least this is super exciting to show you that it actually works. So I ended up jumping a little bit back and forward between the DJI Fly app and the Rainbow app just to make sure that the drone connection is actually working with the new software installed. Bingo! And the camera feed came through. I did get warnings that the image transmission was weak and also that the IMU of the drone was uh, abnormal. I'm pretty sure this is not the case because I double checked that in the, the GGI Fly app, so there shouldn't be something wrong there. And just to make sure that everything works in real life as well and I could actually launch the drone, I took it outside. And of course, I was prompted with compass calibration. So I went through that process, calibrated the compass, and once that was completed, so I manually launched the drone and was hovering a little bit around and it reacted perfectly like I would expect it. You might be wondering why I was uh, manually launching the drone and this is because there is like this activation key inside the app that will count down if uh, you are using the auto launch feature and if you manually launch it, you can bypass this as it's very limited what you can actually try out um, with these three tries that is available. So for you to assess the quality of this app, you can basically just manually launch it with the sticks and then try out the features uh, that you want before you decide to purchase it. And just to give you a little sneak peek what to expect, the Rainbow app includes waypoint missions, orbit, hyperlapse, FPV mode, follow me mode, panorama and tracking mode. This is stuff that we have been waiting for for such a long time. For those of you that don't know the Rainbow app, I've actually tested it with the Mavic Mini here on the channel previously. I will make sure to link that video through this. Ha! 
While editing this video, I just saw that uh, Lichi has released a beta version as well. So of course, I will do a follow-up tomorrow just to test out how well that works. So in case that you're not subscribed to the channel and want to know something about Lichi, then make sure to press the subscribe button below. This will of course be super exciting to test all the features that are available tomorrow when it's uh, daylight. But at least this is proof and this is the starting point to show you that now we have SDK support for the DJI Mini 2, also for the Air 2S and the Mini SE. But there's definitely no doubt that it's most interesting to have this support for the Mini 2 as this will offer a variety of exciting features for third-party apps like this Rainbow app and Litchi, Drone Link, uh, Drone Harmony and whatever, maybe other apps that I haven't thought about or heard about yet. I will of course make videos about the integration of these apps once they are becoming available. And uh, in case you want to follow along, I'll make sure to include a playlist that you can access through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.